there, Jack Saint Top Boostain over the channel yet again as I got another Legends of Runeterra video for you guys today. And today we're going back to Viego. We featured him day one, and ever since then we have not showcased the champion up until now. I haven't. I don't think it's even been a week, but you know, I've, I've been busy building other decks, but I definitely want to showcase Viego soon once more because the first video that I uploaded on Viego, I literally built the deck in an hour. Like I didn't have any time to optimize it or anything. It was literally my first take on the champion uh, with <laughs> just going blind into it because I really wanted to have a video the day of the expansion. So now some time has passed and Viego has been more and more optimized and there are other variants or other region combinations to pair him with. One of the cool things about Viego is that it's turned out that it seems more optimal to run him solo mode. What I mean by this is that it's better, you're better off playing Viego on his own instead of combining him with other champions because in regions like Shurima, you can guarantee that you pick him up with Rite of the Calling and in regions like Froyard, you can guarantee the same with the likes of Entreat. Right Today we're going to showcase a combination with Froyord that I did not build myself. I'm going to give a big shout out to Shihu, I believe is how you pronounce his name correctly. I call him Chichu. This kid's kind of like a friendly way. Hey, Chichu. I'm, I'm pretty sure he hates it. <laughs> I've never actually told him directly or anything. I've never like spoken with a guy. But I do know him uh, very well. He is an excellent competitor, a fellow content creator, a streamer on Twitch. And uh, he's from Poland. Like his friend Alan, I say his friend, yeah, I mean, just because they're both Polish doesn't mean they're friends, but they're actually friends because they, they play together and stuff, I, I think, I'm not sure, I don't know, I'm just talking out of my ass here, but great guy, great player, and really good deck builder, and I wanted to share his take on Viego with Froyord, so why pair Viego with Froyord? Well, one of the first things that comes to mind is that this Froyord Shadow Owls rigid combination is quite the standard control shell. Ever since the beta days of Legends of Runeterra, Froyord and Shadow Owls has been the face of reactive control decks, right? Because you combine drain and direct removal effects such as uh, Vile Feast and the likes of Vengeance with the AoE available to us in the Snowy Mountains, Avalanche, Blighted Ravine, and Frostbites to also halt down certain attacks. So it's a very, very complete region combination when it comes to reacting to what your opponent is doing and disrupting it in that regard. Also dealing with aggressive decks because of all the healing and the ability to wipe out spread out boards. Gives us a good matchup against uh, very high paced aggressive decks that tend to have low static units. And overall, it is a very, very solid, like I said, region combination for playing a little bit of a slower game in general. It's not without its weaknesses though. The game has evolved a lot since the good old beta days. And now Froyord Shadow Owls as a region combination in control decks is more more often I was, I was making sure I was recording. Is more often than not, um, you can capitalize on it. It can be a liability. Decks, especially Ionia, Shurima region combinations are very dangerous. Now we're seeing Irelia Azir come back and uh, getting more and more popular again. It's, no, it's not at the power level that it was before, but it's still a really solid deck, which means that it is a deck that actually benefits really well from our... Like, this matchup is horrendous against the Aurelia Azir. Like, this deck specifically, the matchup is really, really bad, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, Lee Sin matchup is, all, is also not great, but not unwinnable because we are playing Frostbites that can allow us to buy some time against Lee Sin. More, more than anything, the problem is leveling up Viego against those sort of decks is problematic. But we do have a better matchup against stuff like Severe Set, for example, or Severe uh, Action as well. Like uh, Ionia Shurima decks with Sivir, we can bop the Spell Shield with Vile Feast or Avalanche, and then we can fr uh, Frostbite their attackers. Something I really like about this region combination in this deck with Viego in particular is the ability to use Despair. We're actually running Despair as a one-up in the deck. Why? Because we're playing Frostbite. Despair, specifically with the Iceville Archer, is a very nice combination. I mean, it's a poor man's calling strike, but considering we're getting to play this combo in Shadow Owls, it's pretty damn neat. We don't need more than one copy of it, though, because we have a one-off of Entreat, which means that because the Despair is Viego's signature spell, a lot of times we're going to be able to access it if we have multiple Viegos in hand. Another alternate win condition besides Viego in this deck in, is the Invasive Hydrovine. The Invasive Hydrovine can contribute to Viego's level up and just winning the game, but it can also just win on its own, which is a very big deal. It's a card that I ignored day one uh, of the expansion when I built my first Viego deck. I kind of like underrated this card a little or underestimated it. 
and uh, I was ultimately wrong. This card is phenomenal, and it is a very, very powerful snowball effect that uh, is pretty much a must at this at this point, in my opinion, in the Ego deck. So keep that in mind. We have Babbling Burke, which can allow us to draw into the Invasive Hydrovine or the Ego. And uh, we got, obviously, Camavoran Soldiers, Everest and Sentries for the early game, Fading Memories, which can have a lot of different targets, but I like using it a lot on Camavoran Soldier, and some healing with the Kylin Tavern Keeper, whom we need some nice hot soup. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the deck list right there with a one off atrocity because nowadays building a Shadow Isles deck without atrocity is kind of weird. <laughs> so it allows you, us to potentially finish off the game without having to engage in combat at a certain point of the match. So, yeah, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the build. Really fun to play. Not without its weaknesses, though. Like I said, the, the meta has progressed. This was initially built as like an answer to, to the meta game. And, uh,. It was built pretty early on so things have changed and now there are certain decks that can capitalize on this so it's not the most successful deck honestly for me personally but it's not like i played a billion games with it and it is strong and it is something that i definitely do want to share because i want to i want to share a lot of viego decks i have another concept that as well that should be ready by the end of the week so expect two viego videos this week and hopefully you guys are uh, looking forward to that one as well and that's basically it so i'm gonna stop talking thank you guys for watching as I'm just like talking too fast, I'm gonna start again. It was all day. Hope you enjoy the games. Stay tuned for daily Legends of Runeterra content because I do post, like I said, a new video and a new deck every single day. And yeah, leave a like. And uh, yeah, awkward outro. <laughs> Let's go with this one. Goodbye. Okay. Siver Brom. That's interesting, because Braum doesn't deal much damage. So, <laughs> that's, that's definitely the first time I see that champion combination. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. I am intrigued, because they're playing Frost. They're playing Freljord. Uh, it's safe to assume that they have Frostbite. So, another reason not to keep Atrocity in the opener. We're going to drop the Rekindler as well. I'm going to keep the Ice Veil Archer. Against Sivir, it's always a phenomenal resource. And Camelor and Soldier is always a keep, in case you're wondering. This card is... You're always happy to see this in your opener. Because you got something proactive to do turn three, which is phenomenal. And there's your boy, at Viego, little Viego, as noisy as always. See the from here. We play Abros and Hearthguard, and we hope for the best. A true That's fine. That's a weird Ice Veil Archer. To prevent two damage doesn't really seem Such worth it. Well, we got all the units. Oh. I kind of, um... I want to hold back these units because... Now I make it so that he can't attack with this anymore because we have this, this have versus entry. I could just pass, um... Keep the the flash freeze open. I can always play Babbling Berg, but it depends on what my opponent does. I like the idea of playing Viego with, with Flash Free support. <clears throat> Though now for five men, I have a hard time believing like what he could actually do. And we got the, you know, it's Hydra Vines, the movie. You could have some vulnerable spells with the Yeti, that would be a problem. He's attacking with everything else. No, no exhaust? Ooh! Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna take all the damage. Um, though, to be fair, this is better. It sets up the avalanche. Okay, getting a lot of card draw in there. All right. Hmm. Don't see that other Viego there quite a bit of damage but I'd rather pass no 
Let's think here. No matter what I do, if I play Avalanche, that's it. That can pass here. Taking a bit of damage, but the objective is to play the uh, the invasive hydrovine. All oh, right. I can always kill Brom before he becomes a problem. Like Brom is actually very easy for me to go to the with. Okay, let's just pass here. Howling Abyss versus Diego. Can you imagine he got a Diego himself <laughs> without having to do all the extra work? That would make me a little bit salty, to be honest. But I mean, I do have a Diego's Despair here, but he could have counter spells. He is playing Shirima. Okay, okay, that's that's just Zoe. I'm gonna Avalanche. It's pretty safe. Uh, I see no reason not to do this at this point. Like I said, I'm 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 not even like at this point. I'm not even worried. Not worried about Braum, like I always have this to deal with it. Look how we have I'm gonna buy Alfie to take away the. I mean, there's no ghost here in this reading combination. So I don't have to worry about that specifically. And I can kill her now. It's just phenomenal. I could just, um. To ensure that this thing doesn't come back. I'll just go for the attack. I hear her calling for me. I get to kill Sivir here. <clears throat> the power! I mean, yeah, you got you got all the value of the world, but unfortunately, sir, that is in your hand. Not on the board. And on the board, I'm gonna go ahead and say we are a little bit ahead. I'm pretty confident they should do it. I think this is a pretty good attack, if you ask me. 
surrender to me. Okay. He's got them freezes. Maybe I got a little bit ahead of, ahead of myself here. <laughs> oh my god, he had a lot of answers. Just too much power, man. 11 11. We'll do the trick. Alright. Didn't really get to see what the deck. I mean, it was Howling Abyss, right? I guess he was the combined Howling Abyss with Sivir. That, that would be my guess. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit convoluted, uh, but it is an original deck for sure. It's just that at this point, I mean, anything that's not, not Lee Sin, I, I will bow down to, so. Alright, good start. We got to showcase what the deck is about. <laughs> just Viego nonsense. Let's actually open this. Oh, sure, it's fantastic, because I cannot be patient <laughs> and wait until I got that. Oh, we're getting Prismatic Viego. Prismaticus Bando is close, and then we'll go on, on Akshan's side. You know, my true loyalty, by the way, as a Sentinel. Sorry if anybody got confused about that. Alright, round two. Okay. Azir Irelia. This matchup going to be pretty nasty indeed. I kind of want to keep the Babbling Burke, because if I'm important this for us to pick up Viego. Vlad Ravin can be good, but I, I, I'm going to mulligan away these two, though. I, I want some more... Potential early game, like the Cavavoran Soldier. Always happy to see you. But I will keep the Vile Feast in this. Emperor's Days on Curve. That's spooky. When in doubt, Cavavoran! Fascinating. Fascinating. Together we are part of something more. Together, you are children of Shurima. No mercy for those who desecrate our home. They will find our lands do not take well to intruders. I'm gonna strike first. I'm gonna vile feast uh, the Azir here. That, that Twin Disciplines uh, definitely, definitely did us a lot of damage. I'm gonna vile feast again. In case in case he tries to uh like okay. 
not running to Diego, unfortunately, even though we are empowering him, but... I'm gonna bluff the avalanche. I'm gonna wait for a little bit. Gotta play some mind games. Bim, bim, bim. I'm thinking really hard about whether to use this avalanche. All right. <laughs> Feels really bad ending up like this. But unfortunately we're just not we're just not well tech for this deck. And we and we drew pretty poorly here. <laughs> this is so depressing as a game. We didn't draw to Viego. And honestly, like this matchup is just horrendous. This deck is not very popular in the ladder, so the, this this build is not specifically tuned for it. And uh, you know, it's not surprising how this match went. Uh, maybe if we kept Babbling Burke and we had Viego rolling around, it would be different, though. They can always bounce Viego with the Recall effect. It's just, it's just really, really tough, because we have no counter spells or anything. So, we're going to cry. And we're going to move on to the next one. God damn it. And now we got a mirror. This is going to be exciting. We keep the Viego. We uh, we dropped the flash freeze, and um, considering the matchup, we're gonna drop the vile feast as well because we want to find Camavoran soldier amongst other things. We want to make sure our Viego is bigger. Not really keen to trade just yet. Nice. I do want to be copying this. Surprised it didn't attack with it. I want my Diego. To be bigger. Okay, that's good. Look out for reavers. Vengeance, right? That's one vengeance down. 
Oh, there are the mountains! Alright, invasive hydro mine. Ah, you're playing Tarkaz? Ugh. Do I need flash freeze? Sir, I do not. I can just play you. Ew. Tarkaz in this deck, why? I mean, I understand it's a it's a very beefy five drop that can allow you to, but it just doesn't. I've never understood people running Tarkaz in like your control decks. I've I've never 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 understood that. Let's draw. All right. The important thing is my Hydra vines are advanced. He has another vengeance in hand. I mean, we gotta try to go for it, right? If he has vengeance, we can't really stop it. We have a three sisters, but she waits for me beyond the mist, my queen. I really, really, really love this Three Sisters. This Three Sisters is a godsend to my hand. Oh, we're going to level up soon. One, two, th one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, that's the objective in the mirror. What are you? What are you taking? Like, what are you taking out for Tarkas? Like, that's what I want to know. Double Tarkas. I just, I just cannot get behind that. I cannot get behind that. May as well just completely overdo it. Leave your bags at the door, bitch. <laughs> Um, I need to clear that though, so I think the best objective here You could have a despair But he goes down solo Wait, what's... What just happened? <laughs> I'm gonna kill my old man Leaper. So he needs to freeze this. Let's see if I can atrocity.
Bam, bam, bam. Wait, I, I thought this was a Viego, otherwise I would have saved him. I thought this was a Viego. I, th I thought the despair was in, so I was like, I have another Diego Diego in hand. Well, that's that's um. Submission or death for all who leave. May as well do this knee combo. Archer into the spare, getting rid of his Diego. I command you. I just gotta keep going with these miss, man. <laughs> if we can't win with Diego. A true will. Okay. Alright, we're coming. We're coming. I could go for a... I mean, I'm just gonna flash freeze this. I could go for a lethal with three sisters, but I don't feel the need to. Yeah, Ruination punishes me. But I can always entomb something. And I'm gonna vengeance this. Log in! Taking a minute. But again, ruination is what he needs. Anything that's not ruination is just not good enough at this point. He hasn't managed to level up Viego. We have, so Viego is just like, it's too late for Viego at this point. <laughs> okay, hey dude, I, I, I ain't gotta do shit. I ain't gotta do shit, man. I got I got all the stats in the world, but I I hope that hand is just filled with flash freezes. Otherwise, it's not gonna end up well. Oh, and Daddy's oh oh my God, dude, he's huge, thick fella. All right, I mean, show me the bazillion frostbites. You got this. You got this. No, not exactly. There's there's. All these other things. Aren't you super manly, Tarkas? I thought you traded to one of these bad boys. Alright, and there's one frostbite. Getting another, another one for this 20 right here. Okay, that's two frostbites. Okay, that's three frostbites. Alright. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I run Brito Steel. I don't like Brito Steel. There's a lot of cards that I didn't like in its deck. Ours is better. All right, more Viego on Viego action. When you're facing the Demacia version of Viego, uh, I feel pretty confident with this deck because we run Frostbites. Naturally, Viego is always a keep. We're gonna mulligan away the Atrocity. Vile Feast could be good, but I'm gonna drop everything else. I'm gonna search for yeah, Archer, Despair. This is the good stuff. This is the good stuff. We're just missing the Camivore and Soldier, and we're good to go. Yeah. Alright, let's pass. Nothing happening early on. I 
I'm gonna copy. Monkey see, monkey do. We stop his attack this turn. We don't get to preserve a unit on the board, but it's close to perfect. Ah, man, these draws. I mean, we got some answers and stuff, but... This Ice Veil Archer is too important. Grand Plaza. I hate to play the Archer. It's not a good despair target. Or good enough, I'd say. Welcome at me, bruh. I mean, that's perfect. <laughs> You're just helping me speed up the process. Like, <laughs> the Viego, I always call him Diego. Viego bearers are like really weird. Because you're you're kind of dis you're discouraged from from engaging, you know. And now he just he just set himself up for a an avalanche. If I had one, I'm gonna pass. Play some mind games. Feels bad having to do this. Gonna play double Viego. And where I go for damage. Oh, whoa, whoa. Okay. Alright, it's getting intense. 
These flash freezes make me feel really, really good, though, because most of his damage, it's either through combat or atrocity, and I'm able to counter that here. Don't get in my way. I'm going to pass. Will bit attack. Don't duck on my account. I command you. We got the level up finally. 3,000 years later, the problem is we are at 3 health and I only have one frostbite. Okay. <laughs> Good thing. I, I forgot about the fact that he triggers that with the, with the death. I didn't want to avalanche just yet. I'm going to pass. I'm going to keep scouting for what he does. Sense. The wings. He doesn't have frostbites, unlike me. There we go. There's no frostbites here, so it has to be a vengeance. I kind of wish there was a way to like reverse use this as like burn damage, <laughs> but I mean the card would be absolutely broken. Like I said, man, Viego Viego mirrors are just weird. That's a good card to draw though. Because if he does go for a vengeance, we get a tomb, or we can end this. <laughs> How long was that game even? Let's try to get like a different matchup. All right, spooky karma. Really curious to see if we can actually take this deck on for the like into the late game. This emo stops here. All right, Cavalry and Soldier. That's the kind of shit I want to see. So this matchup, because they're very reactive, uh, our Frostbites and um, our Frostbites are perhaps our most useless cards. I mean, we compare them with, with, with Despair. But Flash Freeze is not really a card we're happy to see. Kindly like Timer Keeper is all right, just because it's another body to apply pressure with. But we want to draw, yeah, more Babbling Burks, more of like our units than our spells, because our spells are more about removing the board. And uh, I suspect that my opponent's board here won't represent too much. I'm gonna go ahead and play the Ice Blood Archer. I'm gonna use him offensively. Discourage him from blocking with the Aristocrat and try to push 3 damage in early. You, you do your thing, little Viego. Silent as death. Silent as death. We don't think, we just play Kamavoran Soldier. And then we play Kamavoran Soldier. No, 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 we actually play... 
play a babbling burr. I mean, offensively, it's better to play this now, but what if we draw Viego? Yeah, let's just do this. We got some stats, like low key, we're, we're, we're applying some pressure here. Archer is a little bit frail. Oh, wow, that's phenomenal. Good stuff. They may be scared of a Viego curve here. Meanwhile, we're gonna we're likely to play Battling Burke number two. Yeah, we're okay with this. It was right on my tail. There you are. Where there is life, there is hope. Okay. What in the actual... Wait, still recalls? I mean, we protect some damage there. Yeah, well that was a waste. I didn't know that's how that worked. But he, that, that means he doesn't have a vengeance. Which makes me want to play the invasive Hydra Vine first. You cannot escape. I thought that I, I thought it wouldn't bounce because with Lee Sin, if you frostbite him, it doesn't bounce. Is that how that works? If the enemy like it does it, it counts as it doesn't count as if you're striking though if you're frostbitten that that's. It, this game is like it has some big issues with consistency. If you if you strike with a unit and the other unit it has zero power, it does not contribute towards Jarvan 4's level up. So I don't understand. All right, that's annoying. to play something from his hand otherwise he's gonna be he's he's gonna mill himself a little bit he's okay with that but the moment he goes under deny range I can go for a despair Peace begins within. I 
I want to make him think that I'm under vengeance. I'm gonna play Archer first. Because I can play Archer into Hydrovine into the other. So close to leveling up, man. How do we do this? I think now's the time to play Hydrovan, anyways. Because we still have the mana for despair to surprise him with, and he can't he can't end the turn here now because I just get rid of Karma. I actually don't get rid of Karma. I steal his unit, which is a bit annoying. So this is what he's trying to set up another go hard, which will transform, which will get him another one, and will transform him into pack your bags to basically wipe us here. So what we're doing is we're gonna go for the despair, effective immediately, shutting that play down, and basically winning the game. Oh, that despair! That despair! Getting the level up. Beautiful. Black mess. Let's take it home! Get another spawn? Let's go! I can't even flash freeze here. I don't need to though. I mean, naturally, I have to do something about Viego. Unless he just wants to block him. I will not be made to wait. I move as water. I want to uh, flash freeze the tail of the dragon. So that he cannot kill my Viego with like a grass with the undying now. You will serve. It's very important for us to keep Viego alive. We're gonna have to play another invasive Hydrovine here. I could eventually copy this and, and draw into into what exactly? Now we take the bigger one. <laughs> we burn, then a new. Could have a deny. I can always use this on this to bring back Viego. I want to spread out as much as I can. To threaten as much damage as I can. Going in again. Such 
All right. He needs he needs some heavy blocking here. That's the thing about this deck is that dealing with these like you have to like kind of like Will of Ionia one of these encroaching miss, and uh, you may have to block with Karma as well. These are two. This is like two unstoppable forces clashing against each other. Like these two champions in the late game are just insane. So this is like this is one of the highest power level end games we've seen in a while, which is which is why we have this stalemate here <laughs> because we we both just do so much. Okay, there's a concussive palm. There's that. All right. Well, the good news is we can actually kill Karma. That's that's super powerful. I mean, we don't even, like, Viego just kills Karma at this point. No, actually, no, it doesn't. It, um... Yeah, we actually need to do this, because otherwise we're never going to get Karma uh, as long as this thing is around. And we have nothing to, like, sack it with. He's getting lower and lower on health. I will not be made to wait. He's debating whether... To, like, the, the thing is, if he goes... If he goes for, for that, okay... He's got that go hard now. So everything pretty much gets cleared. On top deck, that means another Viego. Thing is, a lot of those cards are go hards now. The miracle of life. Oh shit, when I should have faded memories. No, no, no. Ah, oh, I should have faded memories. Oh, fuck. God damn it. Oh, I derped. I derped big time. Yes, yes. <laughs> These fading memories are getting so much bad value. Okay, I know what he's doing. He's preventing the the miss from being played, but he still has a blocker for that anyways. Well, but now he doesn't. I kind of force a ruination if I do this. And if that's the case, these encroaching miss are so huge. I mean, I force it with this anyways. Yeah. Yeah, I mean now now this just wins, right? <laughs> this is too powerful, dude. Ah, oh. <laughs> that game took forever, man. <laughs> but we did it. <laughs> all this for her. Yeah, all this, goddamn.